Good morning, good afternoon and good evening. Wherever you are and whatever you're doing, I hope you're having a fantastic day. Today we continue our Things You Missed in Elden Ring series with Eastern Lyurnia. As I was recording this, I realised just how many things were so worthy of calling out. There is an absolutely ton of awesome missable stuff in this area. So I'll try to get through it as quick as I can for you, because we've got about 20 tips to cover in this video. Without further ado, let's get straight into the first one. Once I've finished clearing out these enemies, I'll show you exactly where I am on the map. From the Sorcerer's Isle site of Grace, just keep heading further and further northeast until you reach the ravine site of Grace, and then continue all the way down the ravine. And where I am, you can grab yourself a Golden Seed. A little bit further along in the shack, you can grab a Smithing Stone 5. Further north still, there's a Scarab that'll grant you the Barbaric Raw Ash of War. But the most important reason that we've come here first, just behind the shack, you'll see a Site of Grace and a ladder leading up. We'll explore through this side area first, beat the boss, unlock the Site of Grace at the end, and then we'll move on to the rest of Eastern Lyurnia. Once you've progressed and cleared out the first area after you've gone up the ladder, you'll come to this lift. Watch out in front of you as it's going up, and you can jump or roll off just here and grab yourself another smithing stone 5. Now hop back down, call the lift back down to yourself, and I'll meet you at the top. Progress just a little bit further, and when you get here, instead of going up the stairs, jump off the side. This will allow you to swing round underneath, and when you climb up the ladder, turn back around on yourself, and you can get the jump on a big pile of bats here. Once they're all dead, grab the golden rune 4, and we'll carry on. Before going any further, just after taking out the bats, stick to the right hand side and you can jump up the rocks here and over the rubble and grab a somber smithing stone 3. Now you can get this smithing stone from behind the barrels and continue up the ladder. Once you clear out the next area and you've got to here, you can jump over to the pillar and if you run around the right hand side you can grab a golden rune 5. Jump back and carry on and I'll meet you just a bit further up this path. Once you've cleared out this area and defeated the very tough singing bats, there's a few things we can grab here, and then we want to do a slight bit of backtracking. So over on the left, grab that rune arc, and then run behind the structure here, and you can grab some lost ashes of war. Get the smithing stone 3 as well while you're at it, and then you want to go up this lift and touch the site of grace, but don't rest at it yet, because you'll respawn all the enemies, and we need to go back. So back down the lift, up the ladder, along the walkway, and you'll come out by the land squirts and the land octopus. Just round this corner is a smithing stone 4, and then once you've beaten all the octopuses, you can grab the serpent god's curved sword, which I've never used. You know what? I really need to check out more weapons and not just stick to the Uchi Katana forever. <laughs> because there's some such awesome weapons in this game. All right, teleport back to the ruin strewn precipice overlook site of grace, and we'll go and kill the boss. You can now enter the boss room, and good luck with the magma worm Makar. He's no different to any of the other Dragonkin and Magma Worms that we've faced, apart from the fact that at around 40% health, he'll stand up and his moveset will change, but it doesn't make him any more intimidating. You should whoop his ass, no problem at all, and you'll be rewarded with the Magma Worms Scale Sword and a Dragon Heart. Now, if you move on and up the lift, you'll be brought out at the Altus Plateau, which we'll be doing in a few videos' time. Not for quite a while yet, though, because it's one of the later areas in the game. But you can grab the Site of Grace while you're here, so that you've got a shortcut back there later. And now we'll teleport to the main academy gate at the Rea Lucaria Academy, and we'll head northeast into Eastern Leonia. Almost straight away from the East Rea Lucaria Gate Site of Grace that you'll have just activated, rest there until it's night time, and then a tiny bit further up the road is a Knight's Cavalry boss. Kill him till he's dead, and you'll get an Ash of War Giant Hunt and the Knight Rider Glaive. As we move a bit further up the road, we'll come across Bellum Church. Grab the Sight of Grace while you're here, and then come slightly north, and you can go down through the bottom of the church down this hill here. Come a little bit further along, and you'll find a merchant. He sells you a bunch of rune arcs. I always suggest buying the rune arcs as soon as you can, as soon as you see them. And also a Nomadic Warriors Cookbook 13, which I'm going to say isn't a particularly important one, as I can't even remember what you can craft with it. I want to say it's like Giant Arrows or something. Yeah, I think it's Giant Arrows. Right, that's it. Let's move on to the next one. Directly northeast of Bellum Church, just where you see me here on the map, you can grab a rune arc off this corpse. Now you can come and clear out these camps if you wish, directly in front of the Great Lift. The only item of any note is the Great Mace in this chest here. And once that's all done with, we won't head straight to the Great Lift here. We're actually going to turn right and head towards these mountains hugging the wall you'll see the Frenzy Flaming Tower here off in the distance. And every so often, what looks like the Eye of Sauron will appear. 
if you're caught in its line of sight, it starts to build up madness. And if you let the madness bar fill up, it'll freeze you in place, you'll take a load of damage, and you'll be susceptible to further attacks. So as you're running up to it, hide behind the rocks. Alternatively, you can hug the left-hand side, and there's a spirit spring there that lets you jump up. But either way, it's perfectly safe, honestly. So hide behind the rocks every time it procs, and then get closer and closer to it as and when you can. Once you get to the tower, deal with the rats at the bottom, go up a few floors, and you can grab the Howl of Shabriri from this chest here, which is a very satisfying to use faith spell, which does small amounts of damage and procs madness big time on anything around you, including yourself. And then once you go to the top and kill all of the acolytes here, the tower will stop. Job done, congratulations. Just a little bit further northeast of the tower we were at, in fact, it's directly north of the minor Ur tree you see, is a site of grace. Trigger this so you've got easy access to this area. Then from this site of grace, you can keep heading northeast, kill this big giant boy here, and you'll come across the converted fringe tower. We currently have one of the two parts needed to activate this. You need to be wearing one of the glintstone crowns, and then you need to use the erudition gesture, which you grab later in the game. So you can come back and revisit this tower once you've got the erudition gesture. Put your crown on, use that gesture in front of this statue, and you'll be able to get through that seal. Head back to the Frenzied Flame Village outskirts site of grace that we just unlocked a minute ago. And now we're going to head south and into the Frenzied Flame Village. Be careful here because all these enemies can proc madness quite significantly on you. Grab the Frenzied's Cookbook 1 from inside this shack. And then once you've cleared out all the knights here, you can grab Shabriri's Woe, which is a very unique talisman in that all it does is make enemies aggro towards you from further away. It's actually one of the starter items you can pick up, should you wish, right at the start of the game. And yeah, it just means if you're wearing it, all enemies in the area will just start attacking you. You can then scooch around the outskirts of the village here and grab the note regarding the Lord of the Frenzied Flame. Continue up out the back of the village and then face southwest, you'll see a blue scarab, which is just one of the ones that replenishes your FP vials. But more importantly, you'll see as I'm attacking him, he's running away towards another one. This one is absolutely key for faith builds. Chase it down and kill it at all costs and you'll be rewarded with Frenzied Burst, which I believe is the most far range spell in the game. It outranges practically anything while still delivering a really significant amount of damage. My faith character is level 90 with, I believe, 40 in faith and this does nearly a thousand damage and it barely uses any FP. Absolutely insane spell. And the last thing of note in this village, come to the northern part of the ramparts where I am, mount up and you can jump onto the wall, run along a little bit and grab a stone sword key. And then directly below you are a few rats that were guarding three eyes of yellow. It is just yellow, right? That's how it's pronounced. Eye of yellow? I'm going to go with yellow. Yellow. For the next tip, head back to the frenzied flame village outskirts Sight of Grace once again and go directly south towards the minor Erd tree. Smash up the Erd tree avatar boss and you will get the Magic Shrouding, Lightning Shrouding, and Holy Shrouding Cracked Tears, which, as you've probably guessed, are for use with your Mixed Physic, and they boost your Magic, Lightning, and Holy Resistance, respectively. Next, we're going to head further west, and I'll meet you there. For the next tip, you'll see I have just triggered the Mausoleum Compound Site of Grace. I strongly suggest making a mental or physical note of this Site of Grace for later in the game, because there are two walking mausoleums, one to your north and one to your south. So you'll want to come here and trigger these later on to duplicate some boss souls. I've skipped ahead just a tad because there was nothing of interest on my way here. From the Mausoleum Compound Site of Grace, you want to head southeast and grab the Ruined Labyrinth Site of Grace, then go further south following this path and head west towards the Church of Vows. Just to the west of the Church of Vows, right on the edge of this cliff here, you'll see a few Stormhawk Feathers, which, if like me, you're going for bows and arrows, are absolutely incredible because they mean you can craft lots of Stormwing Bow and Arrows, which are crazy powerful for how easy they are to craft. Once you've done that, head to the Church of Vows, and if you for some reason didn't like the Sight of Grace when we visited the Church of Vows the first time, like I somehow forgot to, go and do that now. And now we're going to spawn another bell-bearing hunter boss. Just like with the last one, you have to rest at a site of grace, progress to night time, rest again, and then he should spawn. I had a bit of trouble getting this to work, and then I found out that you have to make sure that you've exhausted all of the Turtle Pope's dialogue before he'll spawn. So go back to the Turtle Pope, speak to him about everything you can possibly speak to him about, rest at the site of grace again, and the bell-bearing hunter should spawn. And this guy is a tough bastard! 
But finally, with one final visceral attack, he goes down. And you're rewarded with the Meat Peddler's Bell Bearing. I'm sure you know exactly who you need to give that to by now. So let's move on to the next tip. From the Church of Vows, head southeast to where you see me here. Once you clear the camp, you'll be able to grab yourself a Fire Spur Me Gesture. And more importantly, the Flame Cleanse Me Faith Spell. Honestly, one of the most overpowered spells in the game. Because it's an unlimited Poison and Scarlet Rot remedy. For a tiny little bit of FP and an even smaller amount of health, you burn yourself ever so slightly and remove all Poison and Scarlet Rot. Items that remove Scarlet Rot are so few and far between that if you are using a Faith build, this spell is just such a literal lifesaver, especially later on in the game. Once you've got the loot from this camp, you can head a bit further south and also grab the Briars of Sin spell. I didn't bother showing it, showing it in this video because I don't rate it very highly, but you can go and grab that if you want. Now head to the northeast, grab this Site of Grace here, and then we're going to swing around following the path up to this little building here with the massive giant out the front. Once you take the lift down, you'll see we've now just unlocked the Ansel River Site of Grace. This is another huge area like Shifra River, so we'll come back and explore this in a later video. For now, activate the Grace and head back on up. Quite a bit further north of where we just were, you can either deal with or just run past two rune bears and one of them giant floating piles of masks. I, I, what, what is that enemy? They're really cool, but what the hell is that? Like I say, take them out or run past them and on the corpse on the chair here, you can grab yourself another stone sword key. Now we're going to head off to this giant tower we see in the distance, the Carrion Study Hall. So I'll meet up with you when we're a little bit closer. Just keep running all the way south, and then as you get to the study hall, veer off slightly to the right and you'll see a scarab. Take him out and you'll get a somber smithing stone 3. Then go inside the building and light the site of grace. On our first visit to the carrion study hall, there isn't really anything missable. There's just a really long, pretty challenging and very fun boss fight. So go tackle the sorcerer and all of the guys that he summons. Grab the loot from the various areas that you have to chase him. I'll leave you to get on with that. I'm sure you'll be absolutely fine. And then you see here, there's a pedestal. And if we examine it, it says, oh, something fits in the pedestal. We'll revisit this and I'll take you through the study hall later on in the game once we have got that item. It does something incredibly awesome, but I won't spoil the surprise yet. We'll come back and do it together in a later video. For now, we're going to head off again and visit the only cave in this area. Teleport back to the ruined labyrinth site of Grace. And we're going to follow this ravine all the way to the northeast. You can either deal with or just sprint past the rune bear. I opted for sprint past. And then as you get to the entrance, you'll come across this badass headless knight in front of the entrance. They're not a mini boss or anything. They're just a normal NPC. So even if you take them out, they will respawn. Take them out or run past whichever you want to do. And I'll meet you inside where we're notified that the beast eye quivers. You know what that means? Death Root. I join you now a little bit further into the catacombs because I was just going to let you get on with it and then meet you at the boss. But I realized as I was progressing through, this is quite a confusing one. And it's probably the first time that you've come across respawning skeletons. So as you come down, you'll see this stone sword statue here. Run past it and run past the skeleton because he currently can't be killed. Keep running down, turn right into the room with all the traps. And you'll see him dead on the floor in my playthrough. Kill this necromancer and all of the skeletons he was controlling will automatically die. In this room, you'll see there's still some archers shooting at you, some that didn't die. You can turn back round and go into the stone sword key room now. Grab the Rossus axe and deal with the skeletons that spawn. Now go back to the room with the fuck off axe blades. And as the middle one drops down, stand on top of it and it'll lift you up. You can then jump onto this platform and you'll see the next necromancer you need to kill. That'll kill the skeleton archers down there and also a couple in this room, but don't stop yet because a few will still be firing at you. Sprint forwards, dodging their arrows, and you'll see the necromancer at the end of this room on your right. Kill him dead and that's all of the immortal skeletons done with. Any more that you face in this dungeon die the normal way they usually do now. Keep running along here and you'll get to an illusionary wall. Oh. Keep running along here and you'll get to an illusionary wall. Take it out, grab the grave glove wart 4. And before you enter into this boss room, summon D. I don't know if you need to summon him here to progress his quest, but this boss fight is part of his quest. So I'd say summon him just to be safe. 
Once you and Dee have killed the Black Knife Assassin, you'll get the Assassin's Cerulean Dagger and a Black Knife Print key item. Now you can run back to the previous room and jump down the hole in the floor here. Take out the skeletons and pull the lever to open the door to the boss room. Pull this lever to get through to the next room. Be careful of the giant crab that will spawn on your right. Then head to the end of the room, take out this giant crab and grab the rune arc. You're now ready to head back up the ladder and that'll leave you back to the room with the giant saw blades and you're ready to go and face the boss. This cemetery shade is an absolute wanker compared to the other one because he's got a lot of skeleton ads with him as well. It took me a good four or five attempts trying to do this summonless and magicless. But eventually he goes down and you're rewarded with some twin sage sorcerer ashes and you can go and grab the death root from the chest at the end of the boss room. And we're done here. And this brings us on to our final tip for this video. You want to head back to the frenzied flame village outskirts again, run through the village, and as you run past all of the knights and you're heading up the hill towards the back of the village, head towards the church in the northwest and you'll be invaded by festering fingerprint Vike. I actually had I actually had a really tough time against this guy. Jesus, he's he's good. So I may leave the full fight in during the outro so you can see it if you want. But when you beat him, you'll be rewarded with the fingerprint grape key item, which is used to progress Hayeta's questline, and the fucking awesome badass Vike's war spear that he was just completely wrecking me with. And you know the drill by now, churches almost always come along with sacred tears. So you can grab the finger maiden armor set off of this corpse, grab the sacred tear, and you can rest at the site of grace and use it. We didn't actually go all the way up to the grand lift of Dectus itself just here. We'll be doing that in another video when we go to the next area beyond the lift, because before then we actually need to be able to access it, which requires two halves of a medallion. And we've got a few things we want to do before then. So we'll probably tackle Western Leonia and the Karian Manor in the next couple of videos. Until then, I hope you have a wonderful day, and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.